Hi, welcome back friends. It's time for more stories and we have another Jan Brett book, Comet's Nine Lives. So Comet the Cat. Comet was born 30 miles out to sea on Nantucket Island. He grew up wandering all over the island, staying a few days here and there. And there he is on the island. She has the prettiest artwork. One summer day, Comet stopped in a garden to nibble some tasty looking foxgloves. First they made him feel woozy, then he fell into a deep sleep. See the kitty up here in the lighthouse? So many cool pictures. When Comet woke up, he was fine, but he felt different. Oops! He realized he'd lost one of his first of the nine lives every cat is born with. Maybe I should find myself a home. And he trotted into the bookstore and settled on top of a stack of bestsellers. So there you go. There you can see the life leaving him. And there he is in a bookstore. Bookstore is a good place to live. I just don't know how, if it's good to live on top of a stack of books. Life was good until one day it rained all morning and the islanders hurried inside for something to read. And in a rush, Comet's Tower of Bestsellers toppled over and he was buried under a pile of books. Oh no, he had turned the page on life number two. I think I need some fresh salt air. Down to the docks he went and arrived just in time. The little scalloper, Jean T, was casting off. Once underway, he, the easterly wind blew up and Comet knew he'd made a mistake. He has a little life living here. Up and up the Jean T rose. Down and down and down she flew on the following sea. Comet hung on until a huge wave foamed across the stern and he found himself afloat on the high seas. Oh no. And look, we still have a little kitty friend over here. And what does the note say? Lonely cat seeks friend, please. Hmm. Have to keep that in mind. The tide carried Comet back into the harbor, but as he flicked the salt from his whiskers, life number three went way out with the tide. Comet was still recovering on the beach when he heard music. It was the annual 4th of July concert. He climbed up for the tree for a better look. There goes life number three. And there's the concert. Music reached its loudest chord and Comet down got so excited that he lost his grip and plunged down into the tuba. Three waltzes and a suits of march later, Comet staggered away and life number four sounded its last chord. Comet spent the night trying to figure out what to do next. He wished there was another cat around to ask if its lives were going as quickly as his. The next day, everyone was going up to an open window and coming down with ice cream. Comet was hungry, so he trotted after the crowd. There goes life number four. So now he's going to go check it out. Check out the ice cream shop. That'd be a nice place to live. Who doesn't like ice cream, right? The staff at the ice cream shop gave Comet his own bowl of leftover milkshake. He felt so welcome that he decided to stay, but all too soon, an island health officer burst into the shop and spotted Comet. Furball, he cried. Feline residues, maximus infractions. Uh-oh. There he is, alive. Oh, and there's the inspector. And we still have our little friend over here. Writing a note. Cat wanted. Hmm. Wonder what that could mean, huh? Startled, Comet jumped up and fell headfirst to a strawberry shake. The staff pulled him out and he watched life number five fly off licking its paws. Maybe I'm trying too hard. It's time for some fun. He climbed into a bike basket just as a crowd of summer visitors were hurrying off the ferry. So there's the mess he made. Falling into the strawberry, and there goes life number number five. And now he's gonna go right in a basket. Maybe that will work for him, huh? It was Waffle's first time on the island, and she was happy to have Comet's company. And off they went bumpity bump all around the island. Just as they reached the bottom of a hill, last hill into the village, Waffle screeched to a halt to avoid a taxi. Uh oh. What could that mean?
What's gonna happen to Comet now? Life number six, Comet went flying along with life number six. I think I'll just walk the rest of the way. Comet was limping by the Island Theater when a poster advertising the last performance of summer caught his eye. A beautiful actress with a sweet smile looked at him. Maybe she would like a cat to take home with her. And there goes life number six. So on to the theater. Comet pranced happily on stage and purred loudly, and the actress sneezed. <gasps> There's a cat in here! She shrieked, I'm allergic to cats! And she spotted Comet and hurled her sequined high heel right at him. Oh no. That does not look good. Now what's gonna happen? <gasps> there goes life number seven. Comet flew through the air into the last row and the curtain came down on life number seven. Fall breezes were blowing up the island's visitors headed for a ferry. Comet wandered alone along the beach and he could see a red beacon of Brant Point Lighthouse in the distance. So there goes life number seven. And there he is out on the beach. It looks a bit stormy, doesn't it? And he found a bottle. A message in a bottle. Waves crashed and pounded on the sand. The wind picked up and deck chairs and lobster pots flew by Comet. It was Hurricane Elmador heading straight for Nantucket Island. All Comet could see now was the blinking white lighthouse beacon. He ran toward it with, as when a huge wave broke on top of him. Goodness, look at how stormy that is. So stormy. See the lighthouse that he's trying to run to? The rushing surf carried Comet into an open doorway as life number eight washed out to sea. Dazed, he opened his eyes and saw a green light across the room. Meow, someone purred. Meow, he answered looking up. And he was staring into the green eyes of the lighthouse cat. And at that moment, he knew he was home. So there goes life number eight. And now look, he has a friend. As the fall days turned into winter, Comet knew exactly where he wanted to spend the rest of his life. Now he finally found where he belongs. Look at that, at the lighthouse with his own fur line friend. So there you go, that's Comet's nine lives. And it looks like his ninth life was his best life. So um, I hope you enjoyed the story and there'll be more. I think tomorrow we'll be doing some, um, it's in the next couple, two, three days, we'll be reading Fred Gwynn. Um, most of you probably are not old enough to remember, but I do. He was a part of the TV series, it's a black and white series, called The Munsters, and he played Frankenstein. <laughs> you can look him up on YouTube or Google, or even Pinterest, but look up Munsters, M-U-N-S-T-E-R-S. -E um, he had a wife that was a vampire, and a father-in-law that was a vampire, and his daughter, or his niece, was normal, and his son was a, a werewolf, so kind of a silly family. But Fred Gwynn was a very smart and funny man, and most people didn't know that about him because they'd seen him in The Munsters as Frankenstein, and Frankenstein, Fred, Fred, um, Herman Munster was a little bit of a goofy guy. So, but he wrote some children's books that are all on puns and pretty funny and clever. So I thought it would be fun to share them with you and I hope you'll come back and hear them. And I hope you have a wonderful day today and thanks for joining me.